This video is going to be um, the solutions for the practice problems um, in module 10. So we'll just work our way through questions 1 through 10, module 10. Um, so the first one says you have a hanging scale uses the fact that the length of a spring stretches is directly proportional to the weight of the object suspended from it. If you have a 10 Newton bag of vegetables causing the spring to stretch 5.6 centimeters, what is the spring constant on the scale? Okay, so we are given 10.0 Newtons. And it causes it to stretch 5.6 centimeters. Um, and we are asked, what is the spring constant? So find K. Okay, so the first thing you have to realize is that um, the, the weight that we are given here um, would be equal to the force of gravity on the spring, and therefore, um, the restoring force, so and and that weight um, due to the force of gravity would be negative, so the restoring force would then be equal to 10.0 newtons, and we know that the restoring force is equal to negative k delta x. So we just need to solve for um, negative k. So this 5.6 centimeters would be 0 0.056 meters. So force divided by delta x um, would equal negative k. And then you can, since this will be negative, then you can just switch the signs. So the force is 10 newtons. And the delta x, so it will be displaced in a downward direction. So that would be negative. And that's going to be equal to negative k. So with k, we can just switch the signs. And so if we do that math, um, we get 1.8 times 10 squared. Newtons over meters, just the correct um, units for k. Okay, so that was just a simple, simple application of our restoring force formula, um, remembering that this, if the weight would be the force applied due to gravity, and so the restoring force will be um, equal and in the opposite direction. Okay, number two. And number two, we have a dart gun that consists of a horizontal spring. So there's a spring in the dart gun, and we are told that K is equal to 52 newtons over meters. And it is, the spring is compressed 4.3 centimeters when you cock the gun. What is the initial acceleration of a five, 50, 75 gram gun dart um, when the gun is fired? Okay, the initial acceleration. Okay, so this one, um, uh, first of all, let's change this to meters. So it would be um, 0 0.043 meters. And we'll go ahead and change those grams to kilograms, so 0 0.075 kilograms. Okay, so um, we have enough information to calculate the restoring force um, because that is negative k so it's going to be 52 
newtons over meters times 0 0.043 meters. And so if we do that math, we get that the restoring force is equal to, um, so this spring was compressed. Um, so we can call that negative. So the restoring force would be in the opposite direction. It really doesn't matter as long as you're consistent with your directions. So the restoring force is negative 2.2 Newtons. Uh, actually, this would be a negative negative. So the restoring force would be 2.2 uh, Newtons. So the force is applied um, opposite the direction of the displacement. Okay, but we are asked for what is the initial acceleration. Well, for that, you had to remember that force is equal to mass times acceleration. So force divided by mass will give us the acceleration. So the force we said was 2.2 newtons, um, and the mass is um, 0 0.075 kilograms. So that's going to give us the acceleration. If we change this newtons to kilogram meters per second squared over second squared, then you can see that the kilograms will cancel and we will be left with meters per second squared, which is good for acceleration. So again, if we do this math, you should get um, 29 meters per second squared is equal to the acceleration. Okay, so um, the acceleration is positive in this case um, because we defined the um, we de defined the restoring force um, in a positive direction as well okay so that is number two um, for the for acceleration okay, number three. The question number three tells us that we have a 50 gram puppet. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just going to go ahead and um, change that to kilograms. So 0 0.05 kilograms is the mass. And this is a loose spring. So K is small, it's 1.5. Newtons over meters. And um, we are asked to find what is the period of the motion. So we know that the period of the motion only depends on the mass and, and the strength of the spring. So we can uh, just plug in our values then. Our formula is 2 pi times the square root of mass over K. So for mass, we'll put in the 0 0.05 kilograms. I guess we need another zero on there because we had two significant figures. And we had three, sig had three significant figures, so I guess we got to go like that. Um, let's write that again. 0 0.05 zero, zero kilograms divided by 1.5 newtons over meters. Okay, so again, um, this newton would be kilogram meters over second squared. Okay, so the um, kilograms are going to cancel, meters are going to cancel uh, and you'll be left with the square root of second, of second square, which is second. So we take the square root of this, 
and multiply times 2 pi. And so the period becomes 1.1 seconds. Okay, um, that's number three, just an application of our equation for a mass spring system where the amplitude does not matter, only the mass and the, um, the strength of the spring. Okay, number four, um, a 400 kilogram mass Okay, I'm sorry, 0 .4, 0 0.400 kilogram mass um, is attached to a spring and set into simple harmonic motion. If the period is 1.7 seconds, so T equals 1.7 seconds, then what is K? Okay, so t is equal to 2 times pi times the square root of m over k. So we want to solve for k, so let's first of all square everything to get rid of the square root. So t squared equals 4 pi squared m over k. And then we'll multiply both sides by k. Get that over there and divide both sides by t squared. So we are left then that with k is equal to 4 pi squared times the mass divided by t squared. Okay, so then let's just plug in our numbers. So k is equal to 4 times pi times pi, so square pi squared, times the mass, 0 0.400 kilograms. And then we'll divide that by time squared, so 1.7 seconds times 1.7 seconds. And we get then that k is equal to 5.5 And the units are newtons over meters. Newtons over meters. The units are actually going to come out as kilograms over seconds squared, but I showed you last week how that um, that kilograms over seconds squared is the same as a newton meter. Um, I can show you that again. So we, what we would do is that. Um, So a kilogram over a second squared, well, a, a newton is a kilogram meter over a second, kilogram meters per second squared over um, a meter, okay, or over a, um, yeah, over meters. So the meters are going to cancel in that, and you'll be left with kilograms over a second squared. So these are equivalent um, units. Okay, that's number four. Next, let's look at number five. Okay, number five, we have, we're given the K, um, the spring constant is 30.0 newtons over meters. And um, we are told the period it's 1.1 seconds, and now we are asked to find the mass. Okay, so again, uh, T is equal to 2 pi times the square root of mass over the spring constant. So we're just going to uh, multiply both, square both sides to get rid of that square root. So t squared equals 4 pi squared times mass over k. k let's multiply both sides by k. Uh, put a k over there and divide both sides by 4 pi squared. 
and that leaves us with this uh, mass on that side. So k times t squared divided by 4i squared will equal the mass. Okay, so k is 30.0 newtons over meters. And then we're going to square the time, so 1.1 seconds times 1.1 seconds. And we will divide that by um, 4 and by pi and pi, pi squared. Okay, so if, we, if you do that math, you should come up with a mass, this is equal to m. So again, let me, um, this would be, the uh, uh, Newton is a Newton is a kilogram meter over second squared. Okay, so um, the second squared will cancel, the meters will cancel, and you're left with kilograms, which is what we need for mass. And with significant figures at two, you should get zero point. 9.2 kilograms is the mass. Okay, so that is number five. Okay, number six. Um, now we are going to start looking at the uh, problems that deal with um, work and energy as they relate to a um, mass spring system. Okay, so number six tells us that our spring has a constant of 78.1. So K is equal to 78.1 newtons over meters. And we want to know how much work does it take to compress a spring 51.1 centimeters. So I'm going to go ahead and change that to meters by dividing by 100. So 0 .55, 0 0.511 meters. Okay, so how much work is required to compress the spring? So when you compress a spring, what are you doing? You're giving it potential energy. So potential energy is equal to 1 half times K times the um, displacement from equilibrium squared. Okay, so that's going to be the compression. So it's 1 half times 78.1 newton over meters times um, 0 0.511 meters, and we're going to square that. I'll write in another one there. So meters cancel, uh, those two meters cancel, um, and we're left with a with Newton meter, which is a joule. So if you do the math, um, and we can have three significant figures, you should get 10.2 Newton meters or 10.2 joules. Okay, so that is number six. Okay, number seven. In number seven, um, we are asked, what is the maximum speed of a 34 gram object? So we're told the mass is 34 grams. Let's go ahead and change that to kilograms. And we are given that K is equal to 11.1 newtons over meters. And we want to know what, oh, it, it, if, what is the maximum speed 
when the amplitude is 3.5 centimeters. Okay, so 3.5 centimeters. We'll divide that by 100 and get 0 0.035 meters. Okay, so we want to find, um, we want to know what is the maximum speed. So we ultimately need to get to this, right? Because that's the formula that uh, relates uh, energy to velocity. So um, when will speed be at it? So we want to know what is the maximum speed. Well, when will speed be at its maximum? It will be at its maximum when it has maximum kinetic energy. And when it has maximum kinetic energy, its potential energy is zero. So kinetic energy plus potential energy is equal to one-half times k times a squared. Okay, and we just said that um, at it, we, since we want to know its maximum velocity, when it's at its maximum velocity, potential energy will equal to zero. And therefore, kinetic energy equals this. So kinetic energy is equal to one-half times k, which is 11.1, newtons over meters and then we're going to square the amplitude so 0 0.035 meters and 0 0.035 meters so the kinetic energy is equal to 0 0.0068 um, these those meters are going to cancel. We're left with newton meters, which is a joule. Okay, so now that we know kinetic energy, then we can use that to determine the maximum velocity. So kinetic energy up here is 0 0.0068 um, joules. And we'll divide by one half and divide by the mass, which is 0 0.034. Let's start over here. Okay, so kinetic energy is 0 0.0068 newton meters. That's equal to one half times the mass, which was 0 0.034 kilograms, times V squared. Okay, so we'll divide both sides by 1 half, and divide both sides by 0 0.034 kilograms, and that's going to equal V squared. And then if we take the square root of that, that will give us V. So doing that math, um, first of all, let's look at units. So um, the Newton Newton meter. So this is a um, a Newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. Okay, so the kilograms are going to cancel, um, and kilogram meter squared per second squared because it's, it's a newton meter so kilogram meters times meters so you're going to have meters squared here divide and then um seconds squared so so um when you take the square root of that you will have meters per second let me do that again just to make sure we see the units okay okay so um we will have 0 0.0068 kilogram meters over second squared. And then um, that's a Newton times a meter. Okay, and then we will divide that by one half 
and divide that by the mass, which is 0 0.034 kilograms. Okay, so kilograms are going to cancel. Meters times meters is meters squared, and second squared, take the square root of that, you get meters per second. Okay, so we take the square root of that, you get V. And um, if you do the math, you should get that V is equal to 0 0.63 meters per second. So the maximum velocity um, will be 0 0.63 meters per second. Okay, so that is number seven. So number eight says we have a 1.1 kilogram object. And uh, K is 23.4 newtons over meters. And if it is displaced 14.2 centimeters from equilibrium, so 14.2 centimeters is 0.142 meters. And that is the displacement from equilibrium. So what is that? That's A. Um, what will be its speed when it is 5 centimeters from... So 5 centimeters is 0 0.05 meters. What will be its speed when it is 0 0.05 meters from equilibrium? So that is delta x. Okay, so um, we know that kinetic energy plus potential energy equals one half times k times a squared. Okay, so in this problem, we are going to have um, when the spring, when the um, object is at this distance, it's going to possess some potential energy and some kinetic energy because it's not at amplitude and it's not at equilibrium, it's somewhere in between. So um, we still have to we'll keep this in mind, but we have to calculate the potential energy and the kinetic energy. So the potential energy is one half times k times delta x squared. So how much potential energy will it have at that point? One half times 23.4 newtons over meters. And then we're going to square double x, or yeah, delta x. 0.5 meters times 0 0.05 meters. Okay, so if you do this math, you should get 0 0.029 um, Newton meters, which is a joule. Okay, so now we know that. Um, now we can go back up here. Kinetic energy plus potential energy is equal to one half k a squared. Okay, so now uh, now that we know potential energy, we can plug that into our equation, and we can solve for kinetic energy. Okay, so this would be kinetic energy equals one half times k times a squared, and then we're going to subtract the potential energy from that. So, so I basically, all I did there was solve for kinetic energy. So kinetic energy is equal to 1 half times k, which is 23.4 newtons over meters. And then we're going to square the amplitude, which is 0.1 or 2 meters times 
over two meters. So these meters will cancel. Um, you'll be left with a Newton meter, which is a joule. Um, so then we can subtract our potential energy, which we calculated to be 0 0.029 joules. Okay, so this, do that um, multiplication and then subtract this. And what you get is that the kinetic energy is equal to 0 0.207 joules. And we're not there yet because the problem asks us what is the velocity um, at um, when the when the object is five centimeters from equilibrium, what will be its speed? But we now know the kinetic energy. So because we know the kinetic energy, we can now um, determine the velocity. So kinetic energy is equal to one half mv squared. So kinetic energy divided by one half and divided by m, and take the square root of that, is going to give us v. So 200, uh, oh, what was it? 0 0.207 joules. So newtons over, or newton meters, divided by one half times the mass, which was 1.1 kilograms, that's going to give us V. And for this Newton, we can put in here a kilogram meter over second squared. Okay, so the meters are going to cancel. Or I'm sorry, no, the meters will not cancel. Meters will stay there. Um, let me write the whole thing again. Okay, so it's going to be um, 0 0.207 Newton meters, so kilogram meters over second squared times meters divided by one half and divided by the mass, which was 1.1 kilograms. Okay, so kilograms will cancel. You'll be left with meters squared over second squared. We're going to take the square root of that, so you end up with meters per second. Um, and so, therefore, you should get um, for number eight 0 0.61 meters per second. With two significant figures um, because we're limited by this figure. Okay, so that is number eight. Um, In that problem, you have to realize that when you're, they were asked for the speed that was not at equilibrium and not at amplitude. So you have to determine both kinetic energy and potential energy to get to your answer. Okay, number nine. Um, so number nine, what is the period of a 3.98 meter pendulum? So L is equal to 3.98 meters. So this is just uh, simply a matter of plugging in the numbers for our period formula for a pendulum. Um, square root of the length divided by gravity. Okay, so 2 times pi times the square root of the length, which is 3.98 meters divided by 9.8 meters per second squared. Seconds, or meters will cancel, second square, and we'll take the square root of that, will give us seconds. So 2 times pi, and then the square root of this, um, should give you 4.0 seconds. So um, that's the amount of time that it would take for the pendulum to swing one direction 
and back to the other direction. So it's whole, the whole cycle is 4.0 seconds. Okay, that's number nine. And then lastly, uh, number 10. So number 10 tells uh, it, we have a, we're given the period and ask how long the pendulum is. So T is equal to 3.1 seconds. So T is equal to 2 times pi times the square root of L over G. Okay, and we want to solve for L, so let's square everything to get rid of that square root. So T squared equals 4 pi squared L over G. Okay, and multiply both sides by G. Get rid of that over there. Divide both sides by 4 pi squared. That gets rid of that here, and all we have is L. G times T squared divided by 4 pi squared is equal to L. Okay, so we're assuming that we're on Earth, so 9.8 meters per second squared times, uh, we're going to square the time, 3.1 seconds and another 3.1 seconds. And then we will divide that by 4 and pi and pi. And that will equal L. So if you do all that math, um, first of all, so here's seconds squared. And so that will cancel these two seconds. You'll be just left with meters, which is what you should have for length. So if you do that math, you should get 2.4 meters is equal to length. Okay, so that finishes up all of the problems for, all the practice problems for module 10. Uh, I hope those are clear. Um, if, again, if you can, if you can do problems like um, any of the ones in practice problems one through ten, you should do you should do well on the test.